Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good golly, Miss Molly. Welcome to the latest edition of the Canon Film Club, where we talk about all things Canon films. And to quote, quote our good friend Austin Trunick in the Canon Film Guide to If Missing in Action is the Alpha when it comes to Chuck Norris movies, then Delta Force is the Omega. I do like that <laughs> comment, and I stole it blatantly from the book. Uh, there you so, go. <laughs> so today we will unpack the adrenaline-soaked legacy of the Delta Force, high-flying heroic, heroics, heart-stopping rescues, and the, the indomitable presence, I actually said that word without <laughs> fluffing it, of Chuck Norris in this 80s action masterpiece. We're going to break down a lot of the iconic action scenes that define this classic explore its impact on action cinema and there's lots of great one-liners some incredible weaponry and and vehicles in this wild stunts and a fair bit of kick-ass martial arts and combat squeezed in and a great score by alan silvestri electronic score great for the time so strap in and as we revisit this daring hostage rescue uh, and Chuck Norris's legendary action prowess. So good afternoon. Welcome to our special guest once again, the wonderful Austin Trunick of Canon Film Guide. How are you, sir? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you? <laughs> Not too bad, my friend. Not too bad. Um, just, you know, um, tucking in for the winter by re-watching great old movies. <laughs> good way to get through these months. Yeah, it is. It's uh, it's 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 the great thing about winter, especially when you live up north, like some of us do. Um, you know, it's an excuse to just sit here and watch movies all day. So, um, I 
We'd also like to welcome back my wonderful panelists. Imperatus, how are you, sir? Doing pretty good for once. No real complaints. That's high praise indeed. This life must be good. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, well, it's good to have you here, mate. I know you do know this movie, so looking forward to hearing yeah, your, it's one of my favorites. your comments. Um, also with us is um, Pope Metallicus. How are you, sir? Doing good, man. I can't wait to talk about yet another Chuck Norris history documentary where he brings peace to the Middle East by the power of beard. <laughs> he brings peace to the Middle East by destroying an entire city, um, which is... Hey, you know, sometimes, you know, out of chaos comes order. Yeah, there you it's, go. it's the Chuck Norris way, because as we know, Chuck Norris doesn't do push-ups. He presses the earth down. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also with us, our great friend John Das Wolfen. How are you, buddy? I'm doing great. Yeah, good to see you, mate. Um, ready for you... the ready for the Chuck Norris jokes to begin. Indeed, yeah, it's gonna be like want... Baron's Chat 2009 all over again. Exactly. <laughs> we want the missing in action experience. Missing in action experience repeated. Sorry, <laughs> it's, it's random music. And also welcome my great friend Joe from Joe's Atmosphere. How are you, buddy? I'm doing fantastic, man. Good. How are you? I'm all right, mate. You're the only one that's in the heat, I think, in the warm. Well, you could call it heat. It's above freezing. Uh, you know, For, I, I think yeah. the whole thing is cold, but uh, yeah, it's it only here, 40, but not by 40s much. and 50s down here during the day. So, yeah. Um, also, before we get started, I want to say hello to the uh, the chat, but we already have from our great friend Christian Delorm a five dollar super chat. Um, from Christian Delums, don't forget Christian's channel Vinyl Revival. Check that out. This yep. one is for Joe. When Chuck Norris tells a joke about Will Smith's wife, Will Smith slaps himself. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so you're going to have to get a video for that, Christian. Thank you very much. Um, well, let's try this. So it doesn't need audio of that when it's so good. No, 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 no. That's when he stared down the sun and won. And yeah, we're going to be it. looking at that scene later. Uh, so great to see everyone here in the chat. Uh, we got David Glenn, Darth Viewer, Christian Sentient Dildo, great mod, of course, as well. Big Dave K. Uh, we have, did I say David Glenn? I should say David Glenn. We have the lovely Penny. We've got uh, FKHC2005, our great hockey buddy. See you. Um, we have D Bud Martin, another wonderful mod. Davina, the fact giving and mod to Mod Person, uh, Southern Viking, uh, Lord Thoth, my great Canadian buddy. Praise mod. be, Lord Thoth. Praise be to Lord Thoth. Uh, and if I've missed anybody, please forgive me, and we will catch up with you later and get those Chuck Norris jokes flowing. And if you've got any Lee Marvin jokes, well, that wouldn't hurt either. <laughs> So thank, welcome to you all here on YouTube. We're out going at Rumble 2, or D Joe and d butter in the chat. Uh, I think we're on Odyssey and Twitter. Who knows these days with this you are. We are on Twitter. We are on Twitter. Good. Great to see that. Jonah Hex is here too. So before we get launched into the movie, and there's a ton of stuff to talk about, Austin, I, we are always, always, obviously very grateful when you're here always, and I'd like to do the this first before I forget later because I get so caught up invaluable to these shows and what two of the greatest reads and hopefully the third soon <laughs> or, that you can get oh, well, thank you of, yeah well brilliant books <laughs> mate couldn't live without them oh thank you thank you yeah so the canon film guides volume one and two volume one 1980 to 84 volume two is 85 to 87 which has got the delta force section in it and some great interviews in there with with some of the people involved with the movie. Fantastic, great uh, uh, facts and some interesting observations by those. That's Joe Epstein, the stunt guy. Yeah, I think I'm right in saying. Uh, Chuck stunt double. Through. Chuck stunt double. He has a very great interview with you in this book. Um, also, please check out Austin on. So that was on Amazon, you know, where you can get those books and various other outlets. Canon Film Guide on Twitter. Thank you. Goes, Thank you. Yeah. yeah go, go. 
I'm all over there now. <laughs> You're all over there. Go follow Austin on the on on Twitter, and I think you've also got like a Facebook page, which I can't access because Facebook hates me. Um, <laughs> it's, it's advert, big advert comes up as soon as I go. Uh, thanks for being here, buddy. Hey, um, my pleasure. What can you tell us about uh, Volume Three? It's in the works. It is still plugging away. It's, it's going to be a fun one. Um, this was the the late years of Canon, where kind of they, they, they their budgets fell. They they hit a lot of financial trouble um, in in sort of the middle years. This last book sort of covers the I call it the direct to video period. It's a lot of yeah, a lot of movies that may not have gotten theatrical theatrical releases that that went straight to video or straight to cable. And it's fun. It's fun for me because these are movies that haven't been written about a ton. These are movies that mm. it's, it's harder to find research about uh, to research and get information. So a lot of, a lot of that information is coming from, from interviews because you look at some of these movies and you know, they went straight to video. They haven't been on DVD since then. So the, it's it, the writing process for me. It's a lot of discoveries. I'm having a good time with it. Yeah. Are there movies that are exceptionally difficult to get a copy of in that year? Oh, man. Exceptionally difficult? It depends. A lot of a lot of stuff is on YouTube, uh, fortunately. Yeah, I <laughs> um, noticed that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and that stuff tends not to get pulled when it hasn't had a video release. So I don't know what the real rarities are on in this one yet. There are some erotic thrillers that were kind of tough for me to come by. I had to wait for VHS states to pop up on eBay and um, nothing exceptionally rare, but there are some big ones in here too. Like this, 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 this book has blood sport in it. Cyborg, the rise of Van Damme. Two big movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah some fun ones. Can't yeah. wait, mate. I cannot <laughs> wait. That's going to be awesome. And we will learn so much as well. Thank um, you. Yeah, no, it's great to have you here, buddy. Um, so, uh, yeah, sorry about that. I know some people are mentioning these adverts that YouTube puts in now in these monetized streams. Although, <laughs> once we get started in the movie, we may be demonetized. Um, I, I apologize deeply. It does interrupt the experience. I've got it set to the minimum setting, but it's still we're going to kick in occasionally. But um, bear with us, please. And um, thank you for staying with us and, and not leaving when that happens. Um, so let's start off by playing the trailer to the movie mm. always a great point to begin at and see what goodies we're looking forward to america's elite anti-terrorist commandos their only mission to neutralize the enemy starring chuck norris Sleep tight, sucker. And me, Marvin. The Delta Force. This is a hijack! And stout! This is a hand grenade! Because the stakes are more than pride. Daddy! And stout! More than honor. Please! <laughs> more than justice. Select all best sports. Why? But! Because they're fighting to save American lives. No! You take one of us, you gotta take us all. It's a new age of terror that requires a new breed of warrior. The Delta Force. One minute to showtime. We're members of Delta Force and we're here to take you home. Delta Force, starring Chuck Norris and Lee Marvin. American, I want to negotiate. Do you hear me, American? Loud and clear. America's new heroes, the Delta Force. All I know is those passengers on that plane should have known better. I don't care if he's got a collar on, then they get on a plane with George Kennedy. That's right. Yeah, never no, get him. Never no. Get what are you, George silly? Have you never seen a movie before? Airport, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, and also never fly on a very, very low budget airline, which is what that looks like. But there you go. Uh, I think the trailer tells us an awful lot, and it's also it's got some of the, the great motorcycle spots that we're going to show in more detail later. Um, but let's just talk a little bit about the this movie, 1986. Austin, am I correct in saying that Canon made the fantastic decision to release this on Valentine's Day? Yes, yes. Canon loved to program on Valentine's Day. They, they, Delta Force, very romantic movie. The following year was uh, Over the Top came out uh valentine's day weekend so <laughs> canon canon love to put these big their big action stars on that weekend as you say a romantic movie for lovers <laughs> <laughs> so yeah february 1986 budget of nine million bucks which was pretty big for canon it's not the biggest but you know fairly yeah. large um American box office of eighteen million dollars, according to the internet. So not a runaway hit, but probably given worldwide and VHS stuff, it probably made a fair amount of cash. You think, Austin? Yeah, yeah. It was it was a success by pretty much every measure for for Canon. This this was one of their ones that did really well for them. Yeah, and. Um, you know it made money at Blockbuster, buddy. Well, it made a lot of money at Blockbuster. It did. <laughs> and it to be did. fair, I I first saw it on a VHS rental. I didn't see it at the cinema, which is is unusual for this kind of movie. But uh, I wasn't in a living in a place where they they had a lot of movies. I, was, uh, I didn't even have a cinema. So um, um, that's the year I got out of the army. Yeah, but I, I, was, I felt fine about it because Chuck Norris took over and everything's fine. Yeah. Indeed. Um, <laughs> and, uh, that's right. Chuck Norris, the man who can make onions cry. That's right. That's it. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Canon, I guess, and I do, there's some, as usual, some wonderful posters. We're going for some of cinema verite in a sense, um, because this was very much, and it was controversial at the time, very much based on real events. Well, at least. Half of the movie was based on real events, and then it went off to fantasy action. But um, you know, based on the a hijacking, I think TWA Flight 847 hijacking was the, the trigger for this. Austin, is that right? Uh, in a way, for a, a a big part of it, they were already in the over in Tel Aviv, kind of, kind of scouting locations, um, oh, okay. working on the script when the. Flight 847 was hijacked, and Menachem kind of looked at that. Menachem Golan, the head of Canon, and gave direction to his writer, James Bruner, that he should incorporate this, make it about this. So <laughs> they they were already mm. over there ready to film a Chuck Norris movie. Okay. But these real life mm. events turned it into this particular movie. What, what happens in this movie was very much driven by the events that were happening, you know, just, just a short hop and a skip away yeah. from. Or, and that shortness of time between that event and the actual release of the movie was a bit controversial at the time, and especially as there's a couple of people portrayed in the movie that are extremely close to, to the real life mm -hmm. analogs. So I don't recall particularly at the time, but I think there was quite a bit of controversy about that and things like stereotyping. And I don't really want to dwell on it because we're into the action part of the movie. But I think Austin is right to say it wasn't universally loved because of these things. No, no. Um, they, it definitely, they definitely caught they caught, they caught some flack for their portrayal of some of the villains and, yeah. um, in particular, Robert Forster's character. Um, <laughs> Irish Italian Robert Forster, yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> Who was uh, a great actor, by the way. I forgot he was in it. When, yeah, when I saw him playing that dude, I was like, oh my god. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. yeah, things like that. When I think now that would be seen as very controversial. I think at the time, and, and some of the other things in the movie would be more controversial. Now people would complain very loudly about that. Mm -hmm. um, playing the Lebanese guy in it. So why, um, why didn't you use a Lebanese actor? What? Well, well, yeah. At the time too, Delta was still a very clandestine unit. Like they didn't like being talked about publicly. Yeah, uh, they still don't. Um, mm -hmm. And in fact, whenever you start using their name like this, they tend to change the name and the location of the unit. So, hmm. yeah. So the Delta Force 
had been heard of, and they certainly were involved with uh, the, 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 again, an analog in the movie is the Operation uh, Eagle Claw. Yes. Yeah. Iron, uh, the Iran hostage thing, which we all watched feeling with horror on television. That was um, one of their first major operations, in fact. Yeah, I don't know if they'd even been heard of, particularly before the so secretive. They were black ops at that point. Mm-hmm. They're still, well, on paper anyway, still black ops. Yeah, and, and to see them, I mean, I, I I never personally would know anybody from the Delta Force, so how accurate the portrayal was of, of their activities is, is obviously open to speculation. I don't know, Austin, if in writing the book you had any... Uh, any information about just how accurate was the portrayal? I know there's some stunt vehicles <laughs> in this that are not real. But, I mean, uh, yeah, it, Chuck Norris rides around on a magical rocket launching like motorcycle. There's right, yeah. There's no grounds in reality anywhere in here. <laughs> no, <laughs> and that's but, the thing that the movie is in two pieces. Really, there's a dramatic hostage piece, which is kind of gritty and and very uncomfortable, and then it morphs into a magical action fantasy kick ass thing. So it's almost and, like an uncomfortable. One of the parts of this film I love is that, unlike modern films that would cover any kind of thing like this subject, it doesn't pull punches. Like it shows the shit how it would have happened and mm-hmm. does to mm-hmm. this day. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of. It's an interesting movie just because of all these things. I mean, leaving aside the fact it's kick-ass action, there's a lot of stuff in it that could mm-hmm. be. Taken outside. It's interesting. And you can easily dismiss it as a. Sorry, sorry. Uh, no, no, I, I was just saying it's it's Canon's longest, one of their longest movies. Interestingly, because they usually abided by a ninety-five minutes or less rule for everything, uh, yeah. just to get it more showings in. But because it is kind of these two movies, you can see sort of where they. It, it expanded as they were going, and and, <laughs> and of course, Menachem directed it himself. So oh, yeah. it can he be did first time in five years he directed. I think, yeah. And it's interesting that like a lot of these movies, not even just this one, but a lot of the mm-hmm. canon films can be dismissed as like, oh, it's a stupid B action movie. But there's actually a lot of real world shit that goes into this. Mm-hmm. There is, but as Lord Thaw says, he knows some Delta Force guys. This is pure fiction. Yeah, I don't think they had a <laughs> rocket launching motorcycle ever. No, yeah. The launch is, yeah. It would That's be cool really if you did, though. Right? They borrowed those from Megaforce. <laughs> they I was going to say, Megaforce. the post, the first poster you showed looked like a poster for Road Warrior, not the Delta Force, yeah. man. I would, be willing, <laughs> I would be willing to bet that guys from the actual Delta group were at their quartermaster's office, like after they saw this, like. First Arden, can we have this? Can no we have this? Way. It's in the movie. <laughs> uh, Christian has donated another $2 super chat, and there are no 90-pound ladies kicking ass. No, there's no. none of that going on. Uh, uh, not that we noticed, anyway. I mean, <laughs> so thank you for that, Christian. Uh, obviously, you do, have to, you do deserve another little clip for that one. ...to negotiate. <laughs> We all know how Chuck feels. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Chuck Norris, he doesn't mow his lawn. He steers at it and dares it to grow. Um, <laughs> when Sorry, Chuck, Norris, go- when Sorry, Chuck Norris goes swimming, he doesn't get wet. Water gets Chuck Norris. Water gets Chuck Norris. <laughs> As we said before, and we made a new one up, we said uh, Chuck Norris's internal thoughts, you can hear them, and there, you see them as the cosmic microwave background radiation. <laughs> <laughs> so this is actually, it's funny because this is a Turkish poster. So it did play in the, the Islamic sphere. It's a poster from Turkey of the movie. At least in the NATO side of the Islamic yeah. sphere. Um, I, to say, I don't think it now, The Delta Force had a board game and I didn't know that. Oh my God. Wow. This is I amazing. That's, I need I it. Think that's a, I think that's a photo of my copy, actually. That looks but like it my could copy. be. <laughs> I think you might have stolen it from your book. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We play it every Christmas in my house. Yeah. Well, that gives me something to look forward <laughs> <with more>, uh, <laughs> to. Right, right before you watch Die Hard, you play this way? Yeah, yeah, ask, yeah. Oh, Austin, can I ask, does it explode when you get to the end of the game? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it, it, it's, a, it's a pretty fun, like, roll and, roll and move game. It's, yeah. it's all down to the luck of the cards. 
<laughs> I think it says ages six and up there. <laughs> right. Well, this was actually one of the few, like, for for a company that was really good at exploiting, like, getting money out of, squeezing money out of every way they could from their movies. This is one of the few films that Canon actually merchandised. You had this this board game and you had toys, yeah. which is amazing. I actually have it within reach here, so I'll, I'll grab it. But you sure. get stuff like this. Um, let me show that. Hang on. Let me let me. Make it you. is a yeah delta force branded uh yeah Uzi <laughs> so you have a little terror here that you can shoot the target you can set up and shoot over you have Whoa. Little pellets and yeah these would have been sold in you know grocery stores spinner racks <laughs> like I, right by the checkout wow i like that i'm old enough to remember that era of american history where you could just sell that and it was perfectly fine i had probably something very similar <laughs> as a kid just rebranded it probably contained real fireworks. <laughs> um, you're not wrong. Cap guns were a thing for a long, oh, long time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I oh, had say that. Like just, my I parents wouldn't it, like, let me have them. Like, yeah. My parents so, yeah. wouldn't I, let me have them because of uh, JFK's assassination. They wouldn't uh, let me have uh, them. Uh, yep. Yeah. We had some. But... Yeah. I, I can still smell whatever the chemical was that yeah. was on Yeah. You look at a roll of caps and you can smell it. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. those caps are essentially just the primer for a actual firearm. So <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. So, They're in uh, rolls, right? Yeah. And and oh, you, you pull the trigger guns. and it just cycle through and tap the Either next roll or strips. Go. We had yep. cap guns mm -hmm. that had two battles with two rolls. Right. It was like oh wow, wow. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's take a, a little look at the the cast as if we didn't know who the main guy is. Of course. Hello. Uh, so the wonderful, our wonderful friend, Mr. Chuck Norris, let me show that. So Chuck is at this point, major Scott McCoy. I think he becomes a captain in, in Delta Force two. He looks Irish. Or is uh, he I'll buy it. I'll no, buy but it. He's rank. He gets promoted in the second movie. Um, well, he gets demoted in the second movie. I mean, if he's a major here and he's a captain in the next one. Sorry, colonel. He becomes a colonel. Oh, colonel. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. Sorry, I said captain. Yeah, that, so. that's up. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So, I mean, he's at the heart of this, obviously. Uh, major Scott McCoy. He's proficient. He's resolute. He has unwavering determination and valor. And he leaves an indelible mark on most people he comes in contact with. I would say. Um, Chuck is obviously we've talked about Chuck many times. <laughs> what can you say about the wonderful Chuck Norris? Um, look at that, isn't that rugged and chiseled? You know, all the jokes made about him, he really is a nice guy, yeah. it, 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 you know. He's not as tough as his, his characters. I'm just, you know what I mean? I'm just <laughs> sad that they had to tone him down so much for network TV. They even shaved his beard to hide his powers. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and at, at this point, obviously, he had a pretty big canon legacy. And I think Austin, I'm right in saying there was missing in action and missing in action two had already been out. Mm -hmm. And, and Invasion USA. And Invasion USA. Yeah. And I think what was there was something pretty hot on the heels of the Delta Force later that year. Was it? Firewalker or Firewalker was also 1986. Yeah, yeah. Chuck Norris so, comedy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and he he was very, I mean, very fantastic relationship with Canon. And we've got a few clips where he he, uh, he talks about that support. When I had Mystic in action, the script I'd co-written, I took it around, and no one wanted to do anything with it. I take it to Canon, and uh, immediately. Within two minutes, we had a deal. And so when they, they, they go by instinct, and if they feel something, then they'll go with it. And they'll put their, all their resources behind it. And uh, I think that's, that's good. And I think that a lot of times you gotta go with your gut feeling. I do with films. I go with what I feel in myself is the right film for me to do. Sometimes it's right and sometimes it's wrong, but if you can be right more than 50% of the time, and you're doing. Hmm. I can't believe Chuck isn't right 100 percent of the time, but that's. <laughs> well, his 50 percent is 100 percent. I'm yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Not that he is incorrect. It's that history has not proven how good he was yet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we know he's great at math because he can divide by zero. So you know, well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so. so uh, I think that's also a fair summary, though, of how it kind of worked. Instinct, a lot of the time, 
Yeah, yeah, they 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 didn't spend waste too much time overthinking stuff. Uh, if they had a movie idea, that movie could be shooting in two weeks. Yeah, it's <laughs> right? incredible. Yeah, and and apparently, just, even if you got a pitch meeting with one of the Golden Brothers, it was like you have thirty minutes. Go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they they would always say that if you can get a meeting with Menachem, you get your film made. It's just getting a meeting with him because they were producing sixty movies, visiting mm -hmm. sets. Menachem was directing a movie every other year, writing them half of these films he wrote himself. It's crazy. It is. Um, but what what we did discover in this movie, uh, there's a shocking revelation that I'm afraid, as a Canadian, I'm going to have to 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 fill you all in on. Chuck is actually Canadian. That's possible. Canadian? Oui. CBC, Ducana. Well, sure. So I'll never make fun of CBC again. Suck it. Chuck is Canadian. Suck it, you Yanks. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> and not only that, he speaks French. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we also we discovered, of course. CBC. That's right. Yeah. We also discovered uh, something. His character is, is just he's so resolute, it's unbelievable. But as we see in the, on the trailer, he doesn't negotiate. American? American, do you hear me? I want to talk to you. American, I want to negotiate. Do you hear me, American? Loud and clear. So Chuck does not negotiate. That's No, that's, <laughs> that's basically what that scene says. No, that's, that's, a that's about as precise with a micro as you can get. That's right. No um, kidding. All that thing does is spray bullets. Oh, mm -hmm. Good lord! Be lucky if you hit the wall. Good so lord. one thing that 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 distinguished this movie from many others was this, this big cast. It had, had really quite a well-known cast, and Chuck's opposite number co-headliner was obviously the wonderful uh, Lee Marvin playing Colonel Nick Alexander. Yes. With now, eyebrows made of steel wool. Uh, Check him out. Eyebrows. Former U.S. Marine himself, of course, in the Second mm. World War. So a lot of action. Um, very commanding presence in the film. Adds a lot of gravitas, courage and leadership. All those qualities are portrayed by his character. Is it right, Austin? Am I right in saying that Chuck, Charles Bronson was originally considered for this? Yeah, the earliest trade ads uh, featured Charles Bronson alongside uh, Chuck Norris. And the tagline, which I loved, was, you're going to need to build bigger theaters to, to fit. <laughs> to fit <laughs> the going to come see these two stars teamed up. But yeah. the pre-sales were not enough. And Canon paid for their movies by how much people bought them ahead of time. So those were their two biggest stars. Chuck was yeah. making about a, uh, you know, a million, a million and a half per movie for Canon up front. And Charles was probably at two to three at this point per movie. Mm. So it's it, when, once they got the pre-sales back on the Delta Force, they kind of realized that they couldn't pay both their salaries and still make no, it. Right. They, well, uh, I think I think you mean that it created a dimensional rift being due to the sheer amount of awesome that was in that movie. <laughs> Therefore, we now exist in an alternate I mean, Chuck, only one of them was in it. Chuck yeah. Norris and Charles Brunson together in this would have been, I don't know if the universe could have handled that. But there would Rock, have been no survivors. Rocket launcher sales would have gone through the roof, obviously. Yes, it's, absolutely. <laughs> um, so we, we may have actually had projectiles coming through the screen at the audience so you know <laughs> so we didn't get that unfortunately but we did we did get lee marvin in his last screen performance i didn't realize he was only 63 when he died yeah not that old i mean he mm -hmm. still had a lot of movies potentially left in him but he's one of the pre or action era from the 80s onwards he's one of the real action hard guys of the older 60s 50s 60s 70s hollywood Great movies like The Dirty yeah. Dozen. I mean, you just can't get better than, than he's, that. And he's no. great. He's 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 good in this. And you mm. can't you, you wouldn't know that he was like he was in terrible pain. He was sick when he was making no. this, and Everybody. you wouldn't you, you wouldn't tell from from his performance. Yeah, he goes such gravitas and and you know such grittiness. It's, yeah. it's, it brings a real heavyweight performance to the movie which just elevates it a bit. the dirty dozen one of my favorites the big red one 
Another great war movie. Yep. One of Mark Hamill's way undersung roles. Indeed. And one of my favorite yeah. war movies of all time. Yeah, Mark Hamill, along with a bunch of other great people, Lee Marvin. Um, there he is. Very, very good war movie. He plays a great NCO. Yeah, and then The Killers, which if you've never seen, is a brilliant dra uh, crime drama directed by Don Siegel. With Ronald Reagan's last movie. Really? Is it not? Really? Yeah. Huh. John Full time politician after that, huh? Wow. John Cassavetes, who had a canon relationship, of course. Oh, John Cassavetes, I love, man. My favorite movie with him in it's The Fury. Love but, that flick. Look how cool Lee Marvin looks in that movie. Yep. <laughs> the epitome Tough. of cool. Hard cool. Yep. Uh, and then Point Blank, a, a John Berman movie, also with Angie Dickinson. That's two, uh, another great, great, gritty thriller. He's a super cool guy. So to get him in the Delta Force, despite, as you were saying, it's because of money and Charles Brunson's money demands, um, still a coup, I think. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, man. Guy's an Academy Award winner. Yeah. However, as we all know, his greatest performance was in Paint Your Wagon. It was not. <laughs> so... <laughs> so number one hit single in the UK when I was a kid. Oh, are you kidding me? Lee Marvin. Being I've right never in. actually heard a bass human before, but there it is. <laughs> He's there it so is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, of course, Chuck can sing too. In the eyes of a ranger, the unsuspecting stranger had better know the truth of wrong from right. So they're both known for their singing careers. Um, but Paint Your Wagon, a lot of laughs if you've never seen it. The strangest movie, Clint Eastwood singing. Yeah, <laughs> Clint Eastwood singing. Uh, yeah, never thought I would ever see that. And yeah. this was right after Hang Him High, wasn't it? Yeah, it, yeah, it was when he was making the American uh, Westerns. He had, he had gone on, he'd already done the Spaghetti Westerns, and he was starting to make American ones. Well, I think uh, Hang Him High was his first role, so like this was like... In like 68, 69. So like this is right after that. Yeah, I mean it wasn't an expected piece of casting. But well, Lee Marvin for a guy who mostly stands there, smokes a cigarette, and looks intimidating for like yeah. eighty percent of the movie. But, but Lee Marvin's depth of his voice could have probably disassembled all the atoms on Earth if he just no doubt. Um, so Chuck had a real rival, I think, in Lee. Uh, great to see him in this movie. Um, just a few other, I mean, it, it wasn't just that that made the movie, though. There was, um, yeah, as I think, you, as you said, Manaham, Manaham Golan's uh, directorial return in this Austin after a bit of a break. Yeah, a couple of years. I mean, ne never took a long break. I yeah. think, uh, gosh, um, Over the Brooklyn Bridge would have been mm. right preceding this by about two years. And I think he took this movie a little. It was a personal thing for him. I think he wanted to do this because of various factors and his nationality and so on. But. Yeah, and it was also, he had done a film called Operation Thunderbolt back in 77 before he came to the States, and that actually was nominated for Best Foreign Language Film. So I think he had thought that obviously this would be his, uh, an Oscar, <laughs> an yeah. Oscar picture, his first uh, Hollywood one. And it did not, did not happen somehow. Yeah, well, he's he's he certainly uh, returned with a vengeance to directing on this one. That's for sure. Uh, Chuck had a few things to say about his uh, directing style. A film that requires a lot of stunts and special effects work is a grueling task for a director. But Norris knew from the beginning that he was in good hands with Menachem Golan. Menachem's directing style is that he he doesn't waste any time when he gets a shot done he moves on into the next shot we've been we've done sometimes 30 shots a day which is fast but uh he when he moves he likes to move fast but that's his style monaco is a very fast energetic individual i think fast is the key word <laughs> time is money time is money in canon up, up, let's go 
But uh, Lee Marvin had some things to say about him too. I hope you don't mind me playing all these clips, guys. From uh, no, the, heck no. This. So Lee Marvin, there was a project called Pinocchio being floated, Austin. Isn't that mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Toby um, Hooper, Pinocchio the robot. <laughs> yeah, and Lee Marvin was was going to be in it. Well, going to, they were having he was having dinner with with Manahim, and this is what he had to say. What I also know about a modern Pinocchio he's going to do electronic Pinocchio. And he says, like, maybe points to me, he says, you'll be Giuseppe, I said, yeah, right. Because, <laughs> you know, he cast everybody at the table. And then he's talking, and, and you know, Placido looks kind of fascinated by his when Menachem is telling a story. He says, and Pinocchio is walking down the streets in New York, the wires are broken, he doesn't know where to go. And he's, you know, he's got this energy. He says, and all the skyscrapers bend over looking at it. Ah, the windows are eyes staring at the sky. And Placido's going, huh? and I'm going, huh? <laughs> Placido Domingo, of course, mm -hmm. he's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so I love the, his impression of him mm -hmm. Gold. Pretty good. That's so wonderful. we never got that movie, did we? No, no, oh, no. Yeah, we, we lost Lee Marvin before he uh, could make that or shame. his Delta Force sequel. An electronic well, I have Pinocchio. made a discovery on this show. The, you know, that like super deep horn sound in all of the 2010s trailers are just the reverberations from Lee Marvin speaking. <laughs> they used them for the quadraphonic surround Dolby 5 1 Atmos stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's it. That. Yeah, uh, probably in the Godzilla movies, they used Lee Marvin too. You know, under <laughs> but we miss him. I mean, he's only 63. I found that hard to believe. He's really yeah. quite young. Anyway, Manaham Golan uh, directing James Bruner, another obviously stalwart of canon writing. Um, it's a nice picture of James there with that poster, a great poster. Um, did he write it or co write it, Austin? I can't remember if it was co written. He had a co-writing credit with Menachem. Okay, right. Um, the the score, Alan Silvestri, hot off Back to the Future, I think, and other great movies, did the score. And it was all like a Sinclair, what was it, like Sinclavier or whatever they call that thing, all electronic synthesizer. So, yeah, I think there's a particular credit at the end, the one they used, and it's quite a popular one. That was, but yeah, all electronic score, wonderful score. Um, really drives the movie forward, you know. Um, so that's a quite a big name to get on board. Yeah, kidding me? That guy's made some great soundtracks. Oh, yeah. Good Lord. Um, and obviously, all of those soundtracks explode at the end of the uh, the, uh, the CD or the record. Um, not a Moog, David. I think it's a Sinclavier they called it, or one of those eighties. Uh, it's probably a Casio. I don't know. Um, Rocket launchers feature heavily, of course, in this movie. Um, Steve James plays one of the Delta Force. He plays Ch Chuck's pal in the movie. Great to see Steve James. Always great to see him, him in anything. Um, and he knows how to hold a rocket launcher. Yes, he does. <laughs> Looks damn good doing it. Um, so it was lovely to see him in the movie. Um Chuck actually did talk a little bit about the cast and what it meant to him to have this wider cast. This has been a unique film for me because I'm working with some major actors in this film. You know, with Lee Marvin and uh, and uh, Shelley Winters and Martin Balsam. I mean, I have a major cast that I'm working with here. It takes a lot of the pressure off of me because it doesn't, it doesn't feel like I have to carry the whole film. And working with people of this stature uh, has been exciting. So, yeah, he's keen but great to have a, a bigger, well-known cast. So it's not all carried on his shoulders. Um, so, uh, Christian, thank you, my friend. Thanks to everyone for being here in the chat. I hope you're enjoying it and all the, the various channels we're going out on. Another $5... Canadian from Christian Dorm's Vinyl Revival. Check his channel out. Chuck Norris once went to a famine Australia. He came back with a sandwich and his shirt ironed. <laughs> <laughs> That's too good, man. That's too good. Oh. And, a, and a bit of context for, uh, you know, the previous comments. 
he just meant that he could actually finally put the planet down and actually just act. Indeed. Um, he didn't have to carry the whole planet. Uh, i got to play a clip for uh, Christian. This is for me. I never get tired of that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Steve James uh, co-starring, which is great, but he had all these other heavyweights. So you got uh, Martin Balsam and Shelley Winters. Um, obviously, Shelley pleased that she didn't have to swim in this movie. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, a couple of heavyweight guys uh, actors there, and I don't mean their weight. I mean, that's not no. Um, We've also got um, Rat Packer Joey Bishop, yeah, and uh, and Lainey uh, Kazan. So another couple of uh, extremely well known and well respected uh, actors. You got like George Kennedy once again on an aircraft. Don't get on the plane. Do What's not, wrong with you? Never, <laughs> never bodes well. <laughs> never bodes well. We also had the controversial casting of Italian, Irish, American. Robert Forster, who I'd completely forgotten for years, was in this, playing the uh, Abdul Rafai, the head villain. It's the mustache it didn't throw anybody off. He never mustache. wore that in any other movie he was yeah, in. Yeah, he didn't have that in Jackie Brown, that's for sure. Um, the, yeah, George Kennedy, the naked gun dude, that's right. Um, but Robert Forster, yeah, a great actor, just, you know, it would be controversial casting today. It probably was then. We also have uh, Hannah Shigula playing one of the characters was very close to the, the real hijacking that was being portrayed. Uh, Ingrid, uh, she's playing the, the head purser and playing Ingrid Harding, who's a bit of a an analogue of the real life person, I think, Austin, that was in the, uh, the hijacking. Uh, she also made some quite good movies, although I can't remember the names of them. Um, but, you know. Um, and then we had Robert Vaughn playing General Woodbridge. He always shows up, doesn't he? He does. He's, like, he's a canon standard. Yes. Robert Vaughn, General Woodbridge, which is obviously uh, very Team America, I think. You know. <laughs> um, and then hiding in the background there. Is that Joe Pesci? No, no, no. Looks like him. Think more Irish than Italian. Hmm. I think Austin will know. I don't know. Who's hanging out in the background behind Steve James there? At least that's what they tell me online. No, it's it's him. It's, it's him. Him. Yeah. Right. Let me let me see. He has a particular set of skills. Oh, Liam Neeson. It's Liam Neeson, yeah. Oh my god. That's Liam Neeson. Uh yeah. wow. Okay. I didn't know Liam Neeson was ever that young. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he even looked old in Krull. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, first one, first movie I ever saw him in was uh, 81, Excalibur. Yeah. So well, there he is, hanging out behind Steve James, backing him up in a very early, uncredited role, I think, uncredited. But, was, you know, couldn't see him. And there's a few other names we'll talk about later. Um, and obviously there's iconic vehicles like the motorcycle so oh my god so we will be coming to to some of that um soon so let's uh let me just hide this from the screen right now and we'll play some of the uh, uh movie clips or play some of the the stills and we'll chat about the movie as we go through it if you guys are all okay for time austin are you good i'm good cool good stuff uh, Liam Neeson is always packing a massive weapon, if you get my meaning. <laughs> yeah, I think he's a big thingy. <laughs> so I think we get it. <laughs> right, so let me share the um, share the, the uh, video, if I can get my act together. Must be the beanie and the, and the smudges all over his face make me think of Home Alone Joe Pesci. Which are like <laughs> kind of like the Hollywood interpretation of what actual camo paint looks like, I guess. Right. Yeah. They make it look like they got smudges all over their face. Yeah. Like, so the opening uh, sequence, so it starts like five years back from the hijack. 
which is um, historically accurate to like the beginnings of fucking Delta Force. Yeah, so they're looking at the the this this hostage uh, no, this operation, like the Iran hostage thing. It's supposed to be similar, and the ways we know in real life the helicopters were the problem with that one or one of them, and then here we have inoperable helicopters. There's a crash. And they're the right kind of helicopters, too. Those are CH-53s. Yeah. Chuck goes in to, to save. It's like, it's my Alex is on fire here. I'm saying that when he was born, his mother was presented with a girth certificate. <laughs> <laughs> his thing he required. <laughs> so is this supposed to be like the, uh, the mission? Is that the umbilical were, cord? No. When they yet. were trying to get the uh, hostages. This is uh, kind of based, I think, Austin, off the Iran hostage uh, operation that because they did they uh, carter authorized them to go after him there on the, his last day of his presidency and a helicopter crashed yeah. uh and and they turned around and came back well, uh, i mean that yeah. that whole so. part of this is a real story like this yeah. happened uh, mm -hmm. and i think it's the first time people a lot of people have heard of the delta force mm -hmm. uh, operation eagle clause wg rightly says and well, that was um, the first operation Delta Force was actually a big part of, yeah. So, I think, and, and Chuck's character, though, uh, McCoy, he's pissed off by what he sees as leadership failures. Mm -hmm. It seems to be a common theme for Chuck's characters in movies. He goes, sits in a bar, and he's pissed off by leadership. Um, but you know, <laughs> so they, they kind of he's kind of out of the, the game, as it were. And then it jumps forward five years to, I mean, I love her, I love her hairstyle. You got to admit that's, that's a hairstyle and a half. Peak eighties, um, very peak eighties hairstyle. Very, literally a peak. Doesn't take long in the sweat on the plane for it to fall apart. Of course, but, expect um, her to say, "Hey, mama." Uh, so they're all waiting to get on this American air. Uh, it's an American airline, but it's in Greece, Athens, I think. All going home, I guess. And um, we've seen a couple of the bad guys already. Was, somehow they've sneaked something under the, like a grenade under the plane. Um, I mean, this was a real, they, that stuff was, was going on well through the 70s and 80s. People were hijacking planes. So it's yeah. a very real situation. Um, and that's a very real haircut. Yes, it is. Um, so Greek airport and Lebanese villains, I believe. Um and we're seeing Robert Forster with with never trust a man in a white suit. Of course, <laughs> it's, it's after Labor Day, so why is he wearing white? Um, and Bo Svensson there, I think. Yeah, Bo, Bo Svensson. That's Bo Svensson. Austin yep. playing the. Yep. Mm -hmm. The captain. Yeah. What a cast! <laughs> Indeed, what a cast! Um, and they are uh, American travel ways. That's it. Yes. Um, now Martin Balsam. Was in Death Wish three, of course, the year before, mm -hmm. playing a slightly different character, but doesn't get to wield any weapons in this one himself. I don't think. But... <laughs> <coughs> and George Kennedy looking very George Kennedy-ish, playing Father O'Malley, 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 O'Hanrahan, <laughs> O'Brien, O'Brien. <laughs> At this point, the air conditioning is still on on the plane, so everybody's pretty cool. But the, yeah, the hijack begins. I think there's only two bad guys on board right now. And Shelley Winters, this was her fourth Golan and Globus movie, Austin. Yeah, fourth. yeah, she worked a lot with them. Um, she was actually directed by Menachem so many times. That's yeah. one of his more frequent actors that he, he got to direct over his career. Yeah, what were the other ones? I'm trying to remember now. Of the, uh... Oh, we we saw him a little while ago. But Yehuda Efroni is a he's an Israeli actor, but he was in more Canon Golden Globus productions than anyone else. Yeah, he was there uh, earlier. Yeah, we, we, he was we, about nine or twelve movies or something at least. That... Yeah, he's you. See, he's somebody. If you watch enough of these movies, you just you you recognize him, and he pops up everywhere. That's yeah. And um, they're starting to, so they've they've hijacked the plane. They're obviously, they've managed to bluff their way, well, not bluff, because they have a grenade into the cockpit. And that's pre, now that I, I think the rules are now, you don't open it for no reason. You get the, the, the steel doors and whatever. Right, right. Yeah. 
I'm and just then, wondering why Bo Svensson didn't smack him in the head with a two by four. Oh, wrong movie. Sorry. Wrong movie. Yes. <laughs> Completely wrong movie. <laughs> Uh, so they get to take off and they're heading wherever. Uh, and now back to Washington, D.C. and the Pentagon, where Robert Vaughn is about to um, record everything on a cigarette lighter. Oh, no, that's the man from Uncle. Uh, <laughs> Wrong movie. Wrong now, movie. Lee Marvin here, I, I wondered what he was, she said. You can't see them from over here, there. I wondered what she was saying to him. You can't see them from over there. What is he looking at? Her medals? I don't know. Mm. Um, so he's he's um, getting the call to go to the Middle East. Lee Marvin's going to go and sort this shit out. I don't think Chuck's quite on board yet. And no, he he after the the incident with South five years ago, he he resigned his commission and left Delta Force. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Because he was pissed off at the 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 fuck uh, the screw ups. So the the lot of revolutionary stuff going on here, and they're starting to to, to sort of sort the passengers out into ones that they feel are more uh, kidnappable right. than others, um, based on various things. But there happens to be, of course, three navy personnel on board as well. Yeah, that's all, never good. That's yeah. never good because they have to travel. In uniform, a lot of the time, that's yeah. that's not good. I noticed that Robert Forster's outfit matches some of the seats, though. <laughs> so I guess he was going <laughs> camouflage. <laughs> <laughs> Just disappears. Just disappears <laughs> when he sits down. He <laughs> couldn't see him. <laughs> hey, Bush McFadden, good to see you. Keely Chow, good to see you too. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Keep some get those Chuck Norris go jokes going in the chat or any other um, stuff. So, so far, we're not really, we've had a bit of action at the beginning. It's gone into the, the heavy hostage part. But the team is assembling under Lee Marvin, Steve James, there we saw. Um, and this 86 was the height, I mean, it goes to Beirut later. It was the height of the Beirut War. I remember it very well on television every day. Mm -hmm. um, so they're pretty cinema verity here for canon. Kind of pretty on the nose with with some of the uh, things that were going on. Um, he shouldn't have been wearing that red hat. That's a dead giveaway, right? Uh, Dude, <laughs> so come on, man. But yeah, um, her hair is already starting to fall apart. I've noticed. Oh yeah, and the sweat is starting to to the, the real life sweat mm -hmm. on the actors is starting to kick in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus, it's hot in here. <laughs> So is that right? That because if you're in the military, you don't need a passport. Your your ID is enough to get you anywhere. Is that true? Those are in the um, American military. In certain places, yes. In certain places, you don't want to show that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I knew guys when I was I was in the military in Britain that didn't have passports, but they still went everywhere. Well, yeah. I mean, you can still get everywhere most of the time, but. Um, if you're going into a situation like this, the last thing you want to do is let everyone know you're an American. You're an uh, American. Well, no, no, well, definitely no, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, yeah, they're threatening poor Ingrid there to to get uh, details on the, and it's like she's put in a tough spot, you know. I think in the the real life analog, the the person didn't didn't uh, she managed to conceal the identity of passengers, but. Uh, she's she's getting put. So Chuck's seen the news. He's back on board. Oh, yes. He's that didn't on, take long. It didn't. He's coming on board to kill two stones with one bird. There you go. Yeah. And I, I love how the uh, clandestine operations group is uh, <laughs> arriving in a C-130 with American flags painted on both sides of the nose. <laughs> <laughs> is that advertising? So I'm I'm curious if, if if Chuck Norris's character, if you quit your clandestine force and then show up five minutes before on a mission, you're so we're ro sorry you were roboting a bit there, Austin. So Chuck, oh, uh, it's a clandestine mission, and he shows up five minutes, five minutes beforehand. Yeah, that's yeah. It. How clandestine yeah. is it really? I think was your question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's right. I mean, every well, it seems to. I mean, they've compressed some events there, I guess. But he's he's just, yeah. 
But most Who's... of these are actually based on real things that happened. And in the chat, Jonah Hex just brought up another one, well, like we were just saying. It well, was maybe CB who got murdered by Hezbollah. That's the one of the things that upset a lot of people about this movie was that portrayal of what really is supposed to be that guy. Um, uh, only eight months after the real event, so uh, nothing safer than flying with Chuck Norris. Yes, the ground wouldn't dare touch him. No. Um, so our hair, as somebody said, our hair is slowly submitting. <laughs> <laughs> So just to go back to the, the the military aircraft and all that other stuff that were portrayed there, Austin, was this f with the participation of the American military or was this all Israeli stuff? Or? Um, I believe this was mostly Israeli stuff that they got. Yeah. I mean, it would. it's hard to tell because Israel, Israel uses a lot of American military equipment, especially the yeah. C-130 and a whole bunch mm -hmm. of other stuff, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I they they had more um, American equipment on Invasion USA when they shot in the U.S. Yeah, I, th I would think so, but uh, yeah, painting the American flag all over the plane. It's um, as W C says, how dare we question the authenticity of the movie? Well, you know, there's our, our man, of course. Um, um, he the bits that were kind of authentic about the real events were the bits that got people really upset. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because they added just enough to make it yeah. really relevant. He's going to call his friend Paul Kersey. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. Um, at 30,000 feet, you can still use Liam Neeson's thing as a fireman's pole and safely get to the... So we've successfully added to Chuck Norris jokes with two other joke templates here. You yeah, have Lee, Marvin you know, and Lee, Lee Marvin's Neeson. voice jokes... And um, yeah, and uh, Liam Neeson dick jokes. Now, what I, I, it was interesting that Weird Al Yankovic was working in the um, control tower there, of course. But uh... <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody has that role that they have before they really get famous. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, it it it, it soon moves off into fantasy action world, which is the bit we're all waiting for, of course. But, mm -hmm. um, but it is a it is a strange mixture of this gritty there he is, Weird Al, um, this kind of gritty, uncomfortable hostage takeover play, and then it kind of switches thrown later, and it becomes pure fantasy, high octane action. So it's almost like a it, uncomfortable mix at, at certain points like it's two different movies almost um that sure was a lot of uh vehicles on the runway that they're trying to land on right there I, it I, was, I, was kind of funny but he said we're <laughs> landing whether you like it or not <laughs> he's, that's he's, it we're, we're landing. i mean yeah i mean what are you gonna do not land there was there was um a korean movie called emergency declaration i watched a couple of years ago, I think Austin's uh, back again. Um, we, we, yeah, uh, where nobody would let the plane land because there was somebody sick on board it. Well, the thing I say, we're going to land somewhere. You're going to have to let us land somewhere. Right. You can't just keep turning us away. Otherwise, we're going to just land <laughs> in a right. hurry. Um, yeah. Sir, do you have a license for that weapon? TSA officer to Liam Nesson. Yeah, the polyester is causing quite a few issues, I believe. Um, but the thing is, I've been on a few low-budget airlines where it felt that hot on the plane. So, action switching out of Beirut, they landed in uh, in Beirut, and it, I think, was this this was filmed in Haifa, Austin. Yeah, yeah, standing in for Beirut. Um, and they actually make the point in here of like Beirut used to be the like playground of the Middle East, or Lebanon, a beautiful country, resorts, beaches, whatever, racked by civil war. Um, you know, we don't want to get into the the who's and the whys, but regardless, it's a, it was a beautiful place that suffered a lot. It suffered incredibly over the years. And on a positive note, is actually doing fairly well recently. Yeah, yeah, good, glad because. 
I've met a lot when I was over there, over there in the Middle East, met a lot of guys from Lebanon, nice guys, most of them. Yeah, and uh, there's actually a lot of wine that's being grown in the Bekaa Valley now. Which is yeah, it's that kind of place, uh, uh, Lebanon, you know. So here they are getting geared up. Um, and a mixture of <laughs> mixture of styles. Uh, obviously, they're definitely planning to go undercover. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, they, they, as you, you said, Austin, it's a fairly long movie for canon, but they did cut through this stuff pretty quickly, I felt, the, the, the whole prep bit. Yeah, why well, I mean, once, once it's time to get... Yeah, once it's time to get down to they they keep it rolling. <laughs> yeah, see, X marks the, marks the marks the spot where um, Liam Neeson's pole would be landing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so they they start to um, yeah they've beaten this poor guy near to death, and then of course uh, yeah. But so they're on the ground in Beirut, and they're letting some people go, but they're also going to. Take others as hostages somewhere else. Quite this is where the action starts to kick in. Um, bit of a standoff because they can't really, yeah, um, they can't really assault the aircraft no. because of what's going on. Yeah. And then they got to watch the, as they say, you don't get on that fuel tanker. They're shooting at it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. At this point. Getting off this aircraft would have been a huge relief, not only for the characters, but the actors too. And Lee Marvin's face, yeah, haunted tombstone. He's, uh, look at that. As we say, those those um, eyebrows are doing, they're acting on their own. They have their own agents. They yep. have their own agents. They've no got doubt. their own trailer. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, like, you know, especially as a guy who was in the Marine Corps, like, he can portray that, like, this guy is a veteran who knows what's about to happen here and is trying everything in his power to stop it. Yeah. Right. I really like Lee Marvin's performance in this. It's, it's, yeah. um, it, that, it was, I, I never saw anything that he it wasn't good at. I mean, that, and to know that this guy was it World War II he's a veteran of? Yeah, he was a yeah. U.S. Marine in World War II, served in the Pacific. Yeah. So this man saw the most horrific shit that has ever happened right. in warfare. Yeah. Well, I think sure. in the Canon Film Guide Volume 2 section on the Delta Force, mm -hmm. uh, I think, was it you, was it you Austin, in, that artic in, in your chapter there that mentioned how he, he talked to somebody about being hit in the back, what it's like to be hit by a bullet in the back? Yeah, yeah, Bill Wallace, who plays, um, you, we see him a few times in here. He's the Delta Force member that, spoiler alert, dies. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> but he, he was afraid of performing that scene, and he asked Lee Marvin what it's like to get shot in the back, and and Lee Marvin took his hand and just hit him as hard as he could right in the back, right in the middle of his back, and was like, it feels like that. <laughs> <laughs> Except yeah, like, in a voice that's like 20 octaves lower. It's right. like being hit by a 4x2, so, he says. Yeah. Sort of the 80s, you know, analog to the, uh, you know, Christopher Lee story of him correcting Peter Jackson on getting stabbed in the back. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like, Peter, that is not what get it, what a man getting stabbed in the back sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> so should have got Boyce Fenton to hit him in the back. With a blank of wood. <laughs> two by four. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that... Um, there's almost a Team America touch to this training scene with their, or uh, practice scene. Where they're, um, it wouldn't surprise me if the guys for, uh, who made Team America actually based it on this. I've often felt Team America... There you go. That's very Team America. Yes, it um, is. <laughs> it's, I've often felt that Team America had, took an awful lot from this movie. Durka Durka, Muhammad Durka. Jihad. Like, let's, <laughs> take, let's save Paris by destroying it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, they're they're getting their shit together, and um, it's the cue to um, for the real action is going to start soon. But yeah, mm -hmm. beautiful Mediterranean. We forget Lebanon's on the Mediterranean. Beautiful yep. Mediterranean yep. place. Um, but yeah, they're sticking them. I, I'm not sure whether they're looking. They're looking obviously for attention. I'm not sure whether. It was ever mentioned what they're whether they were looking for money to release them or if it was just press they wanted. 
I'm not sure they make that clear in the movie. Like, um, I don't remember offhand. No, I mean either. Like, are they holding them for cash? Is it just for for worldwide publicity? Uh, is there is there prisoners they want re revealed uh, released? And a lot of it was just to be a dick, yeah. right? But the church, uh, yeah, because Beirut obviously had all all um, creeds re uh, represented at one time. But Robert Forster is pretty effective too, and he doesn't. I mean, some of the others are very stereotypical, ranting kind of terrorists. He's a little bit more cool. Well, that, that fits with the mindset, especially of this era, but also most terrorist groups of, you know, you have your fighters who are just absolute fanatics. Yeah. And, and then you have well, a leadership that actually has a plan. Yeah. I mean, and he's not, yeah, he, he's, he's not ranting and raving. Uh, here's Chuck, as we saw earlier, pretending to be a Canadian, which is just ridiculous because, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, there has to be tough Canadians out there. Come on. Man. Oh, I know. You've there got is, hockey players. They're there tough, is right? Tough. You'd be a hockey lot, player, couldn't he? There's a lot of tough Canadians. There's that yeah. Bill Wallace there. No. Yes, yeah. That's yeah, it's him. Bill Wallace, yeah. Superfoot Bill Wallace. Yeah, well, yeah. he's the, he does the driving, of course. And the uh the, the great chase scene, which we're gonna look at a couple of clips for. So some clips coming up. Chuck Norris RCMP. <laughs> No one would ever fuck with the Canadian Border Patrol again. <laughs> you know, Chuck Norris can Man. speak Braille. Chuck Norris can speak <laughs> Braille, you know. He's that good. Yeah, And he can unscramble an egg. <laughs> yeah, we didn't split the atom until Chuck Norris went back in time and Roundhouse kicked it. That's right, yeah. <laughs> he actually, physicists do cite him as proving time travel can exist because he can Roundhouse kick you into yesterday. <laughs> I know the hits just keep on coming. So this is where they get into the first. I just real... that that last slide though. I just don't get the, the why. Why would you wear all this camouflage and a bright red and white? Welcome uh, to around your neck. Middle yeah, Eastern yeah. terrorist organizations. They yeah. actually do dress like this. Yeah. Wow. I don't, well, I still don't understand why. But <laughs> yeah, a lot of people wear that in the Middle East. I mean, I wore it when I was there for as well. It keeps your neck. I'm getting burned, whatever. Yeah, so but you would think it'd be camouflaged. You know, those are obviously the colors they're wearing. Yeah. Yeah. Why, but here's the other question: Why are they wearing jungle and forest colors in an urban <laughs> environment? Urban environment. All That's and brown. Another one, yeah. <laughs> also, a very yeah. fair point. <laughs> so, so this this is where we really get into the gr start of the really great stunt work, and this chase is a prime example of that. Um, mm -hmm. Like the positioning of the cars. The traditional water mill. There's not a, a, a car chase unless a watermelon stand gets blown up. That's right. You got to have <laughs> squishy stuff exploding. No yeah, doubt. So, so we're actually going to take a little look at. Uh, we'll have a break from the stills and we'll take a little look at one of those uh, clips. So here we go. Uh, let's get this up <laughs> on the screen. The chat's uh, on fire. The chat is on fire indeed, and as as most of the stuntmen are going to be very shortly. Yes, very shortly. <laughs> The melons it's must not explode. a car chase unless watermelons are destroyed. And ev everyone made fun of the low speed chase with, you know, OJ Simpson, but that might be the lowest speed chase ever recorded with a VW <laughs> microbus against a Willie's Jeep. I know. And, <laughs> and it's it's inspirational great. 80s montage music. It is. Exactly. It's the electronic montage music. And, and I love the going down the stairs bit and mm -hmm. things that you see a lot in movies now. Uh, like going downstairs like that, where although they did do it in the Italian job in the sixties, but they they just the strategically placed vehicles to crash into. I mean, who parks their vehicle like that? <laughs> and I love that it became such a meme of American action movies that it was even parodied in Avatar: The Last Airbender with the Cabbage Guy. Yeah, 
<laughs> My so cabbages! We'll watch a little bit more of this wonderful um, car chase. <laughs> No, Chuck is a bad sum of gun because he's lethally accurate with an Uzi. Now, a micro range, exactly. It's not right up next to him. He's shooting a, a ways away with an Uzi. That, uh, if you've never shot a gun before, this is the least accurate gun that's ever been made. It's just made for spitting bullets as fast as you can. The full size one's not bad. The micro, like the single, the handheld one. Oh, get, oh dear God. <laughs> so the, the the beauty of all that was it was fantastically plotted out. Um, was it Joe? Was, was it Joe Epstein? John, it? Yeah, yeah. John Epstein was the uh, he he was he performed a lot of the motorcycle stunts in this. Right. Yeah. He was the motorbike guy, which we're going to take a look at soon as well. But these are just brilliantly plotted physical effects. It's amazing how that VW van though can soak up a lot of bullets. <laughs> yeah, <I> can <laughs> with no with and, there's, and now of course then we see why they parked that yellow van halfway out. <laughs> but it German, soaks up German, a lot of bullets. German efficiency. Yeah, um, we started to see something, then we lost them. Yeah. Oh, God, <laughs> but yeah, the, the, it's obviously got um, steel plating in it to, uh, to protect Chuck. But Chuck bullets just bounce off Chuck anyway. Best fix to say they don't need steel plating to protect Chuck. Yeah. Maybe the driver, but not him. Right. But it's a great scene. I love it. I mean, we've yep. seen so many movies copy that those those things since. Um, yeah. Um, I just wanted to blend in with the movie. That's what. <laughs> yes, I can see that. <laughs> Hang on, let's get you up on the screen. Let's see. Yeah, he's all set. He is. Yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah, actually. Next- yeah, I, it's it's actually uh, what care I forgot how you, you say it, but it's actually one of their their heads. Yeah, out of, yep. out of um, scarf gear, head gear. I've, yeah. I've worn a few in, uh, out in the Middle East. So very handy. Um, but yeah, the um, that, <laughs> great car chase anyway, and, and but not a single bullet gets through to the good guys. <laughs> Yeah. Are these guys firing blanks? Well, the well plenty, of, uh, plenty of bullets got through to check, but they just. It doesn't matter. They, yeah, they and this is, hide. Now we're getting now. Now they're infiltrating the the whole teams on board. They're getting the, and and they've got tricked out all the tricked out gear, the dune buggies, the motorbike. It's just awesome gear that they've got. It's right. It's so it's, it's, it's technology is like a video game. It's like <laughs> any any uh, time he gets in, it's plus fifty armor. And, and since you right. rightly points out that you know this is before the Toyota Hilux asserted its dominance over the third world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh man. The Bush yeah, Paradise Lost in Miami, they call Dixie Cup guns. They have half a dozen of them completely unload or jam, throw away and get another one spray again. Yeah. That's Wolf and Ghost Protocol. Ghost Protocol, that's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. And actually the one I wore when I was in Afghanistan is very similar to the one you have on right now. Yeah, I, I had just the, the most sort of black and white one, the grey, little grey black and white one. But, uh, but very handy. It's great. Uh, keeps your neck. Oh, great. Piece of your neck. Yeah. Also doubles to cover your face from some of the dust. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so now we're in full fantasy action mode. Like We're done with the Gritty realism we're now into. And light them up, 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 light Let's them up. light up a few people. Um, yeah. And it's some great stuff. Like McCoy, the, we're going to see it soon. McCoy just goes through these guys like they're nothing. The bed scene. He puts a dozen, <laughs> puts dozens of bullets into the guy under, hiding under the bed. Right. Sleep tight, sucker. <laughs> yeah. I gotta find actually while I'm, while this is playing, I gotta find a couple of the stills that we're gonna talk about from this. 
in a few minutes because I got some some uh, the motorbike stuff is the most impressive to me. And Chuck did ride some of the. He's you know doing wheelies and just really showing off on the bike. And that wasn't something meant to be filmed. That was <laughs> that was just John Epstein having fun and. <laughs> And Menachem's like, oh, film this, film this, and put it in. He didn't even know it was in the movie until he saw it. Yeah, he, he was just mucking about, yeah. And uh, yeah. But he did the, the stunt, we're going to see it later in more detail, where he stands on the bike while riding it to grab the rope. Mm -hmm. just, wow. And I think he fell off the first thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Guy got beat up on, on these movies. I love talking to stuntmen because you can just, you can ask them it, uh, on, on a Canon production, at least mm -hmm. like how much did that hurt? And they'll tell you, they'll tell you what they broke and <laughs> you yeah. know, how long in the hospital afterwards. Stuntmen oh, are the best man. They incredible. are incredible. Yeah. Just the, the practical stunts in this. Uh, I was most impressed by the motorbike stuff. So riding a guy over a burning stuntman on a motorbike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, rocket launcher and a mortar on the bike actually and there's the one casualty they get they get one casualty mm -hmm. uh, um, after they kill like zil a zillion bad guys a zillion dudes yeah, yeah um, I'll, and not one hostage is harmed uh, yes. so I'll just take a quick pause thank you everyone for watching we got 36 people in the in watching here on YouTube a uh, bunch of people watching over Rumble, and I think we're we're on Odyssey and Twitter too. Thanks everyone for being here. Hope you're having fun. I know we are. Christian Delorme, my great buddy, another five dollar Canadian super chat, which Chuck Norris would appreciate being a Canadian. Um, <laughs> Chuck Norris has a grizzly bear rug. It's not dead. It's just scared to move. <laughs> <laughs> and as FK, she says, people getting hurt in a canon film. Surely you can't be serious. <laughs> Uh, I am so, serious and stop calling me Shirley. Stop calling me Shirley. So it's time to play <laughs> another little clip. Um, I don't think I'll play a Chuck one, though. Let's play something by the great Steve James. <laughs> I've often wondered how you get that swooshing noise. Oof, really? Was something those those things have got to be heavy, man? They're big. The swooshing oh. noise. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Yeah. I've tried it. It doesn't work. It's a bit of scratch, a flesh wound. I think, unfortunately, sadly, on Delta Force Two, some people were killed. Yeah, one of uh, Cannon's several helicopter tragedies. Yeah, it was pretty really? sad. That's yeah. a shame. Right there, then. And we'll talk about Delta Force 2 in a future episode, but um, I think after that, Chuck kind of scaled back the military action stuff and went more to cop stuff, just doing cops. I think it yeah. became good. Yeah, he, he, his, his exact, I think, phrasing was no more jungle movies. Yeah, mm -hmm. he'd done, he'd done with, he was done with that, and he'd seen some of those, those problems. Mm -hmm. Um So, yeah, so anyway, they've kind of torn their way through most of Beirut now. Um, there's not a lot of it left standing, um, causing chaos in the various groups of, of terrorists. Uh, and only taking one casualty so far. But we've yet to get the, the goods. That they we're not at the best bits yet, the motorbike cycle bits. So. No. No, this is a. I mean, these scenes. Though, I mean, all this stuff from that point where the raid starts onwards is just insane. Yeah. It's some of the most insane action I think you'll see in any any movie ever. I mean, certainly in the practical effects era. But um, now, of course, things are made to look really slick. This is much more kind of. Yeah, this is this is eight millimeter, man. It's, this, yeah, it's this the eighties, so, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, well, there we reason, go. But there's <laughs> a reason why people love '80s movies because they were badass. Yes, yeah, it's yeah. badass. So we've got the um, we're getting the, the. I love this is where they decide they're going to destroy several city blocks. I think. Mm -hmm. go. Um, so you've got the obviously Chuck and Lee do it, but Chuck and uh, uh, and Steve James do it too. 
Uh, rocket launchers. I wonder if it's the same rocket launchers they used in Death Wish. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I think that was a law rocket, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a law. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, these are different. You load these things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you seem custom put together because I've never seen anything like that in inventories. Look at yeah. the length of them. Liam Neeson yeah. length, really. <laughs> oh, the length is about like, like the weird. Uh, yeah. like the other shit is just like uh, I'm not yeah. quite sure and, what that's supposed to be. Now we get to my favorite bits in the movie. Where one man on a motorcycle can stop hundreds of armed men. That's right. <laughs> and his name is Chuck Norris. Yeah. So thank you, Smilex. Five pound super chat. Five, five pounds UK at Thanksgiving when Liam Neeson stuffs Turkey. The women of Turkey walk funny for me. <laughs> <laughs> We've created a new monster. Oh, the yeah. curse of Liam Neeson. Thank you, Smilex. I got to find you a, a nice clip to, uh, to thank you for that. Um, uh, yeah, let's do this. Liam Neeson, of course, would find it very difficult to do that. Yeah, he couldn't do it. It would be physically impossible <laughs> for him to be do touching that. the ground. Yeah. Right? Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so this is possibly the most iconic moment in the movie, Austin, would you say? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm wondering how much Chuck had an in, in input into to perhaps even writing this or suggesting this or whether it was all all the writers, uh, Brunner and, and uh, Menahem, but um, that's it's, I'll have to go back and look at the script to see yeah, if the, what lines are actually in there because it's very Chuck. Mm -hmm. Now, this motorbike, um, it's a Suzuki SP600, I think. I don't know much about bikes, um, but we're going to play this clip. I think before we go past the uh, the slides, so I got to edit. Uh, I got to find it. Well, actually, there's um, before we get to that, I missed playing this clip. This is a uh, showtime. Sleep tight, sucker. America. That that's some, right, America. That is some good <laughs> shit. Yeah, it is. He jumps now, the wonder... guy on the bike after shooting the rockets, and the guy's still on fire. Yeah. I wonder awesome. what the sequence of events was between this movie and Navy Seals, because I remember Navy Seals coming out later. Yeah, that was the Charlie Sheen. Yeah, movie. and I, it's it has a lot of influences from this. I would want to say because like some of the action is just over the top. Yeah, um, yeah, somebody just mentioned it blew up real good. It blew up real good. She did it. She blew up. She blew up good. <laughs> she really did it. She blew up good. Blew up real good. <laughs> so, I just—I mean, there's so much going on in that scene we just saw. But that's when you start to see the rocket launchers and the, the, mm -hmm. just the most insane bike. And um, in fact. Now, I'll show the stills in a minute, but um, because I've got a still of a flipping the switch, it's got rocket and mortar. Now, you be careful that bike because you might just be trying to switch your lights on, right? You know? What the hell, man? <laughs> He's trying to uh, signal there's a cop ahead and end up taking out the apartment block in front that's of That's right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I have to question the accuracy of a friggin' mortar shot from a moving motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> So let's take a quick look at, uh, at uh, this icon. Hey, seventies. Before you get involved in this, I gotta take off. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, him. I didn't see that in the. 
Thanks for being here, buddy. Oh, no um, problem, man. Uh, you got anything you want to plug? Uh, yeah, actually, for once. This Thursday, uh, between 8 and 8.30, time still being set, I'll be doing a stream as of this point with Aaron Sparrow and uh, my buddy who's got the t uh, channel Toy Gains. We're going to be talking about collectibles and figurines and shit like that. Uh, should be a couple other people popping in. That's what I'm still waiting on the time for before I announce that. Other than that, it should be a pretty interesting conversation, actually. Since cool. Aaron and my buddy Toy Gains really know what the hell they're talking about when it comes to those things. Nice. Um, well, if one of the our wonderful mods could maybe grab a hold of the link to Imp's channel and stick it in there, that'd be great. Thanks. Uh, yeah, look forward to that, buddy. And uh, thanks again for being here. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, this is uh, one of my personal favorite Chuck Norris movies. So it's kind of cool hearing what other people had to say, you know, say about it. In particular, uh, Austin, with his knowledge of what goes, what went on with canon, kind of brings a new light to uh, some of my favorite movies from the back in the day. Oh, for sure. I mean, Austin, uh, we do appreciate you being here always. And and the, go check out the canon film guides, everybody. Because you'll learn Indeed. a lot. I did. Okay, mate. Thanks for being here. Take care. Yeah. Have a great day. Take Have care, bud. One. If I wouldn't get me out of town, I would definitely be on that stream with you. I'll get you on one of these days, Joe. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I'm busy, uh, but I'm going to find time for you eventually, yeah, buddy. Yeah, no, thanks, all good. To, yep. thanks to uh, D-Bud for, uh, for putting the link to him channel there. Go over and check him out, everybody. Uh, yeah, let's play this um, this wonderful clip. George Kennedy regretting being in an aircraft movie yet again. Yeah, right. There's one man. Hey, Swift. Musana, who are you? Hey, Swift. It's Chuck Norris. Look at him. Look at him. Just look at him. It's Chuck. Who is the Russian element? Tell me, Alamut. Sicker. There I go. We heard from the Vietnamese how this goes. That's right. <laughs> yeah, okay. Have you never seen the cannon film? Oh, it is. Oh, oh. He's, he's got a switch for rocket and a switch and a for mortars. switch for mortars, yeah. <laughs> uh, great scene. Let me, uh, that's too much. Man. Cut that out again. But yeah, that, that switch is just the greatest thing ever. I mean... Attention to detail, pal. The capacity for, for danger there. <laughs> Bring that switch. <laughs> Hang on, show screen. I got to just show it in a little bit of a close up. So, um, this is what it looked like there. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, Fire. you could just be pressing the horn, switching your lights on. <laughs> <laughs> It would be dangerous, except that Chuck Norris never misses. He never no. misses, but this no. this is a the apparently it's a this is the original bike, and as I say, I don't know much about bikes. I used to years ago, but now I've kind of lost touch. But Suzuki it's a, rice, it's a rice burner. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. this is not the actual bike. one. A play bike that takes freedom seriously. So I wonder if this was them cashing in on that. <laughs> right. No, this, I think this advert was before. America. I think it was before the movie. This, so they weren't cashing in on anything. But, um. Oh, there's there's one of the the wheelies mm -hmm. that were pulled, uh, and then the mortar coming out the back. That so, must be a short lob and mortar thing. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. Oh, man. And then the, the standing. So this is uh, John Epstein standing on the bike as it's going and grabbing the rope. It's just incredible. Mm -hmm. What a man. What a man. What a crazy man. Crazy yeah. man. What a crazy man. No doubt. Um, there's the flip of this burning guy getting jumped over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Run over by a main actor. Ice a rocket. Yeah. Yeah. And there's the actor will go, Are you crazy? I'm not doing that. The stunt man's like, Yeah, I can make that happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kickstand is down. Um there he is, Chuck with with uh, John. And uh as you can see, he stands in quite well for him. I mean, there is a yep. lot of similarity. Yep. 
Um, Chuck did some of the cycling though, but he's, I think he said Austin that Chuck's more of a race car man. Yeah, yeah, he didn't, he didn't, he did a little bit here and there. Um, mm. Obviously, they couldn't have a stunt, stunt double, but yeah, they weren't gonna. Chuck wasn't gonna be allowed to uh, stand on the back of his bike, even if they wanted to. Oh God, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> and I just love this stance. It's just awesome, awesome stuff. Yeah, but if you want to aim that thing, you got to put it on your shoulder. I know we yeah. haven't reached this point yet, but we <laughs> will. Oh yes, we will. <laughs> Look at that. Rugged is the word, but yeah, they really tricked this bike out. It's incredible. I wonder if someone still got it somewhere. The the uh, modified version. Um, let's hide that. Go back. So, action uh, closing in uh, to you know everyone's getting released, and then he's going to mop up the remaining bad guys. Um, obviously, the Delta Force bullets are worth one Delta Force bullets worth a thousand terrorist bullets. <laughs> Shots are getting sprayed everywhere. But um, oh, I'd forgotten about this bit. Yeah, Where yeah. He gets on board. This is very Indiana Jones. I think you can't have a Jones. you cannot have a military movie without a deuce yeah. and a half in it. He jumps no. aboard, fights the driver while he's driving, gets him and pulls him out. And a great advert for Mercedes there. So yeah, they get the one um, the one injury, uh, which is yeah, this is why we it's a fantasy action, <laughs> <laughs> fantasy action. As WG says, oh yeah, hello, hello there. Um, the only way this movie could have been more American. Is if the theme music was Molly Hatch, it's flirting with disaster. Flirting with disaster. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Firing bazooka <laughs> bazookas from the hip. Gangster. <laughs> Gangster perform. Yeah. That's right. I fire my, my, my bazooka. So that's what Liam Neeson would do. He would fire from the hip every time. Yeah. yeah. They would have their faces covered, you know, but. Uh, You can't you know, cover up. One thing I've noticed yeah. consistently is uh, the flag on his shoulder right there. That's backwards. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. I just want to apologize again for these adverts that are interrupting the stream. It just was very, I've got it set to the most minimum level possible. Can't switch it off, unfortunately. I see YouTube is going down the Twitch route. Yeah, we'll see how I can't that works out for switch me. it off, unfortunately. I've got it to the minimum necessary to allow it. Yeah, and yet some people are getting... I really do apologize. It's a pain in the ass from everybody I know. A blast from the waist. Now, please stand directly in front of this large window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there they are in a cotton field, so that could be awkward for some people too. But... Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's Liam there he is Thunderstruck would make a good sound right to it yeah. someone's actually using a knife instead of a rocket launcher so it's wow. a nice refreshing change I would say well when you're trying to be covert you know yeah oh well, this they look all cozy cuddling each other So they're going to get this thing off the ground with everybody on board, except Chuck, of course. Yeah, Chuck's got to take out the entire uh, the entire uh, uh, terrorist army. Indeed, and leader, including leadership. Yeah. Yep. Well, I mean, it was a logistical issue. I mean, you cannot lift Chuck Norris's balls with a seven hundred seven. It's not physically possible. So. <laughs> Especially after you've already got Liam Neeson's dick up there. Oh, you get on. one or the other. You can't get them both. Yeah. I had no idea Liam was such a you know entitled gentleman. But uh, I'm not <laughs> I have a chat bot spamming. Uh, by uh, have a bot spamming. I know my Streamlabs is kind of going at the moment, but um, yeah, it shouldn't be. It probably will. It'll settle down in a minute. So 
David Glenn, who's been here all through the show, thank you, David. Two uh, dollar super chat. Was Cynthia Rothrock ever in any canon films? No, surprisingly. Quite that, surprisingly, she was not. Does surprise me, Austin. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> you thought yeah, she would have been. Like they would have gotten together. You know, it would have been an obvious match, but no, she didn't do any movies for them. Yeah. You thought she would have been perfect. Yeah. For that. Yeah. So for you, my friend, um, we will play you. Uh, I think we'll play you one of my new favorite clips. American. American, do you hear me? I want to talk to you. American, I want to negotiate. Do you hear me, American? Loud and clear. <laughs> so it's for his you. Pul you his pulse rate never goes up. You know, it's just it's just even keel. Loud and clear. And Vogelberg was a terrorist. <laughs> it's just, sometimes <laughs> when we touch. <laughs> Yeah, um, there was another comment earlier that I was trying to um, about Liam Neeson, but I'm, I think I've lost. Oh yeah, Bigfoot has a grainy video of Liam Neeson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is a good one. Oh my god! Um, we spawned a new meme in real so time. This is amazing. The, the girth of Liam Neeson. I'm going to have to get to work on some memes of that. Um, i got one more clip to play before we finish out these stills. And it's uh, it's this one. Let's go on stream. Going somewhere? Robert Forster doing his best um, acme acting here. Right. <laughs> I love how you can hear the punch over the bike. Uh, That's great. I think what's the most impressive about that clip for me is that he, he doesn't just fly the motorbike through the window. He punches the guy perfectly. Yeah. That's so great. I guess that was all John Epstein as well. Uh, yeah, he, did, he went through the window. Yeah. Yeah. It sounded like it broke before he actually went through it with the sound effects. It might have just been a little <laughs> bit off there. A little bit off. Yeah, a tiny yeah. bit off. But it's one of, another great moment. Uh, the motorcycle stuff's the best stuff in this for me. I just love it. So both Fenson's looking fairly uh, rugged. And then some more great motorcycle, uh, they're shooting at us. No shit. Their bullets are pretty ineffective, though, because they're terrorist bullets. They're basically <laughs> blanks. They're basically blanks. Well, I mean, it is an RPT, so, you know, fairly <laughs> accurate to real life. Girl of a nation. <laughs> oh, no. I don't think there's that much West white cloth in the Western Hemisphere. Girth of a nation. <laughs> was oh, no. uh, that's uh, mm. yeah, why the mustache, dude. Yeah, but yeah, what a great stunt. I mean, gravity, to, uh, and he fell off first. I mean, think of the injuries. The poor, the guy must have been bl black and blue from head to toe. Yeah, that stuff. You know it. <laughs> and now, of course, in traditional American fashion, everybody drinks a beer once they get on the plane. And I'm assuming oh, the beer. I'm assuming the beer is warm though, because there's been no air conditioning on this. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Everyone takes a sip out of a nice cold Budweiser and then immediately uh, yes. goes up on the floor. This is before Budweiser was uh, controversial, of course. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, Can wondering... anybody tell me what Budweiser stands for? I don't know. Just... Because you deserve what every individual should enjoy regularly. I did not know that. Yes, that's that's it. No, it's I'm just American. That, that's that's an old bar thing. That's an old bar thing. We, I don't we, want to drink warm Guinness, although some people <laughs> prefer stout to be warm. But I like my beer cold. Is it less? Yeah, give me a cigarette. Talk, I'm hurting over here. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> 
And then they get back on the ground and the big crowd wait to greet them and uh, everyone's safe. And other than one casualty, well, two, because the poor Navy guy got uh, murdered too. Other than yeah. one, two guys, I think they... Uh, so it's two, 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 uh, two casualties on the good guy side and sixteen thousand on the bad guy side. Say, a lot, oh, <laughs> so, so, a lot, um, including yeah. Robert Forster's mustache. Yes, Robert Forster's was well. Well, I think um, Lee Marvin may have lost a couple of hairs from his um, eyebrows, which is a. I don't think that's one. possible, brother. It was a pretty big illness. <laughs> So there it was, the Delta Force. Um, I, I mean, leaving aside all the geopolitical stuff, mm -hmm. that last half hour, yeah, awesome. pretty intense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. For you, Austin, where does it sit in the canon uh, catalog in terms of your your prefer preferences? I mean, is it something that you? Like or is it? I mean, I like it. I'm by, among my favorites. I, it's it's probably if I were just to rank the Chucks, it's my third of my favorite. My third favorite of the Chuck Norris uh, movies that he did with them. I, I I love Invasion USA. There's no fat on that movie at all because they literally couldn't use you know a quarter of the scenes that they shot. Mm, <laughs> it's wow. just nonstop Chuck Norris action. And then I love the first Missing in Action. Uh, that, both of those movies. This one. This one's a great. It, it's it's great. The action's awesome, um, but it's still not for me. It's not quite as tight as 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 those other two ninety you know ninety two ninety three minute. Yeah, <laughs> this one's like a war. Uh, it's more like War and Peace epic. It's so long. Yeah, yeah. This is this is a lengthy canon movie, but yeah. So it's it, but it's great. It's and it, it, it's important. I mean, it's a it's a it's a good movie. The um, its importance for canon is way way up there and mm. but yeah yeah it's it, personally personally I, I i'm an invasion usa guy <laughs> yeah and we'll be doing that movie in future not that far in the future for sure um when, when people talk to you about canon films Austin, is this one that they always bring up oh yeah yeah as far as their best known movies or ones they're most most remembered for and Del delta force is up there delta force is something that comes to mind first Everybody's yeah. seen. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, Pope. I mean, how about you? How does this fit in your um, canon of movies? And I mean that in both senses. I would agree with it's a top three Chuck movie. I just don't agree with the three Chuck movies. It's, <laughs> that's fair. That's one right. and two, and then this for me, yeah. and then Invasion U.S. Well, opinions, opinions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's a amazing, amazing film that was done yeah you know, like you said through a fair amount of controversy and would never have been produced today no it would you could not make this movie in any way shape or form now i don't think i mean you can make the action but it would be very very different setting and yeah and yeah. they would have to like completely like sanitize the ethnicity and or location of the terrorists and as to be you know politically correct and all yeah and it would take all the fun out of the movie well it would but i mean it was there was a lot of people were upset about the stereotype so i, I you know there's there's probably a countervailing opinion out there too but um i tend to look at it more from an action perspective because i love the action the other stuff I'm, you know, i don't want to pick a side or i mean everyone hates bad guys and terrorists but you know there was mm -hmm. some pretty egregious stereotyping at certain points i guess yeah um i can understand why people would be upset let's put it that way i'm not saying i agree with that but, uh, and robert forster would be not a choice that would be made now <laughs> it's it'll be no you can't do that so um so uh david glenn's requesting the horse club i think you're thinking of a different show david maybe the cotton council which <laughs> It's, we don't do the horse <laughs> clip here. We don't do that clip here and never mention that again. The Cotton Council. Clip clap? I mean, what? Cotton Council on Snowdub's channel. Yeah, Check Snow it out. Yeah. A lot of it's fun. great. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. There are puppets on there, some of which sound a bit like me occasionally. It's kind of. Kind of. Yeah. Wearing a kill. You know? puppets. Yeah. yeah. Um, talking of horses, have I mentioned Liam Neeson yet? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, Invasion USA is a Christmas movie, and that I'm glad you mentioned that because I'm going to include that in my list of favorite Christmas movies when I do the uh, Tom Corner shit list show next week. <laughs> um, yeah, so John, that's Wolf and Hutch. What's your feelings about this movie? Well, this was a a rental staple. This was one of the movies that you're looking for stuff you can't find anything. You grab Delta Force, or you grab Invasion USA, and I would both. actually oh, grab them both. Yeah, but I would uh, I would put this at number two behind Invasion USA. Yeah. Um, well, I'll wait to hear Joe what you think first before we we we. Oh man, um, this is my favorite Chuck one. Yeah, I, I really, I'm not a fan of the Vietnam era stuff. You know, I think that, mm. that, that you want to talk about a uh, subject matter that I really don't even want to think about or talk about. It's that era. Mm. Um, so that'd be third on my list and, and uh, Invasion of USA would be second. But I love Delta Force. It, it, I haven't seen it in a long time. Doing this show brought back a lot of memories of it. Um, but, it, you know, the factual stuff in it, I mean, the stuff that was pseudo factual, uh, it was uh, really on point. It really was, but, um, it's much more enjoyable in the second half of the movie when the stunt men get to work and everything starts blowing up. It's a lot more fun there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Blowed up real good. Yeah, Blowed up real good. Real you good. know, uh, this mm -hmm. is for, this is an audio clip for anyone asking for the horse clip. Oh, good God. Hey, over here for donuts. Don't listen to him, eh? He's a, he's a hoser. That's right, you're a hoser, you're a hoser, as, as Chuck would say, you're a hoser. That's right, <laughs> being a great comedian. Mm -hmm. Um, I find it hard to position this. Uh, I love this movie more so the latter half of the movie. I think the latter half of the movie is insane action, some of the best you'll get in any Chuck or or um canon film. And I love it, I mean, I do love it as a result. I think I'd be tempted to put missing in action firewalker and invasion usa just slightly above it i completely mm. forgot about firewalker yeah I, I think i'd put the i just think overall as, as austin said they're a little bit tighter particularly invasion usa um that's not to say i don't love the delta force i think it's it's just got a and we're just only, talking canon ones right because i yeah, mean i really like this cop stuff better i really did i, I uh my favorite Chuck Morris movie is the uh, is uh, what's it called? The Hero in the Darkness is that the name of Hero it? Hero in the Terror. That's a canon movie. Hero in the, the, Hero in the Terror. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Right here on VHS. Yeah. Well, there yeah, you go. Know. Well, then that's my favorite one. This is second. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Yep. I mean, yeah. People in the chat. I mean, feel free to to chime in with your favorite. Some people are are, are going for um. Obviously, we were talking Chuck movies, but you know, Davina's Bloodsport is her favorite canon film. Um. Yeah, let us know what you think in the chat. Your favorite can Chuck Norris canon? Another one that isn't Chuck, but is, is actually a really good movie, and we must do this one soon. Is Alien from LA, mm -hmm. which is a really fun movie. Canon actually wanted to put Chuck in Bloodsport when they first acquired that script, but. <laughs> The character is twenty some years old, so <laughs> yeah, he's a little old for that. At <laughs> yeah. that time. yeah, not even Chuck can go back in time that far. Yeah, uh, the, uh, fast him, pal. Big Don't Dave K. Uh, the Liam Neeson jokes were because Liam Neeson makes an uncredited appearance in the Delta Force, so it's yep. ca we kicked off a monster literally with the Liam Neeson. Really? Yeah. Um, John Holmes is apparently envious of Liam Neeson. Uh, apparently, yes. <laughs> was Liam Neeson his stunt double at some point? Well, I mean, he made an also a second uncredited appearance in this movie as the plane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Invasion USA is Darth Vader um, missing in action. Smile X, he does love that, of course. Um, uh, what did you you said, Joey? You said. Your favorite was oh hero and the terror, and the terror yeah. So Debo mm -hmm. agrees with you. I love that one. Um, and I like it when he does more martial arts. <laughs> okay, right. less gunplay, more martial arts. That's what I like. Yeah, yeah. Th this this is a very true statement by Darth Vader. <laughs> 
Dramatic. It would have been five seconds long if Chuck Norris was a blood sport. No um, shit. No. Which studio did I come in peace with Dolph Lundgren and oh, Brian Lennon? That wasn't canon, but... Is it Orion? Perhaps Orion. It might have been Orion. That was another film studio where like, as soon as you saw their splash page... Of, you know, before a movie, you knew you were in for a good time. I think Orion was canon, but maybe with slightly bigger distribution budgets. Oh. I don't know. Yeah, it was a, a Transworld Entertainment. Transworld Entertainment. They, they did all the Shokasugi movies after show left canon. Yeah. You know, confused with the other TWA. <laughs> no, no, and Transworld, of course, we might mean a different movie entirely now, but um, we must do a 21st century movie at some point, I think, Austin. Oh man, uh, there's some there's some wild ones in there. I mean, Captain America. Is, if you want to, Menak and Golan produced uh, take on a Marvel. Yes, movie. we must do that. It's about there's a there's a list, and obviously we bow to the pressure of the the audience about what they may they may want to see us do next. Uh, Transworld Entertainment, sponsored by Bud Light. Yes. Oh no. Um. <laughs> um so someone's asking for a joke, Liam Neeson joke, <laughs> activating a fault line. Uh, yeah. uh, Invasion, so Southern Viking, Invasion USA is my favorite Chuck Cannon film. I do like his earlier films. Force of One, The Octagon, Good Guys Wear Black. Chuck's got some great movies. Obviously not all canon, but... Uh, so, um, but on that note, I would love like to thank everybody. We had a wonderful crowd here today in the chat. You've all been very funny and very... On fire, I and thank you for the super chats and thank you everyone for being here and all your great chats. Thanks to the mods, Sentient Dildo, uh, D Bud Martin, Lord Thoth, Davina. Um, I'm going to forget someone I know. I'm sure I'll forget a mod. And um, uh, I did mention Sentient D Bud. If I sorry, my deepest apologies if I've forgotten anyone. The mods do a great job. Thank you to them all. Thanks to everybody else for being here. Uh, Christian Singh, Hitman all the way in Vancouver and his French Canadians. Well, mm -hmm. hey, yeah. nothing wrong with that. We, as we know, Chuck himself is a French Canadian. <laughs> this is a fact established by this movie. That's possible. Canadian? Oui, CBC du Canada. It's proof, absolute proof. What more proof do you need? Chuck Norris is America. Canadian. America. Uh, <laughs> yeah, chat was on fire today. You guys are the greatest. Thank you for your continued support. I'll probably be sticking something up on my community page asking what the next movie we should do is. Um, probably want to not do another Chuck one in a row. So I'll really look for something different. And um, Liam Neeson either. That sticks up enough on its own. That's right. <laughs> We don't want Liam Neeson popping up all over the place. Um, but yeah, we'll figure out the next one soon. It'll probably be in the new year. Um, the Canon Film Club, we're going to keep it going. It's a lot of fun. I am deeply grateful to you, Austin, for joining us yet again, my friend. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure to hang out with you guys. Yeah, no, we love you having you here, mate. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun. Um, once again, everybody, check out Canon Film Guide on Twitter at, at Canon Film Guide. You'll see all the latest news. And, and Austin's got such a great collection of clips and posters and newspaper adverts that are always up there. A lot of fun. Please follow him there. But also make sure that you get on to Amazon and I'm assuming other stores, um, <laughs> other online stores. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can find it all over. Amazon Canon will get it quickest though that's <laughs> well, that's right yeah and you've yeah. got it all the different formats there kindle hardcover yeah. and softcover canon film guide volume one 80 to 84 the golden years i guess <laughs> <laughs> uh canon film guide volume two 85 to 87 check them out everybody great books i love them love them to death thank you for writing yeah. those austin and thank you Cat canon film guide volume three coming soon Still, nose at the grindstone. I'm, I'm still the grindstone. At it. Yeah, check those out, everybody. Thank you again, Austin, for being here. Um, what have you got coming up in the near future? Or anything uh, events you're attending? Or? No, I am working like crazy through the winter on this book. 
I gotta I gotta make some headway and you know, I wanna I wanna finish it up by the end of next year. So I, I have a lot of work to catch up on. All right. Cool. Well, yeah, you get your head down and do that then. Don't let us distract you. Right. <laughs> I got a question for him though. Where did you get that killer picture, that piece of artwork you got for your header on uh, Twitter? That is oh. awesome. Oh, shoot. So yeah, that's an artist. Um, Oshin Hughes. Um, he's OMH draws on Twitter. If you're looking for him. Gotcha. And I, 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 I link to it all the time, but yeah, he is amazing. He did the cover of both my books. Mm -hmm. Um, just I love yeah. the Dennis Hopper with the I was just gonna say I love the Dennis Hopper in there yes. with chains so. yeah mm -hmm. yeah check, check out his check out his page because he's always sharing his artwork on there and he does so much so much cool stuff not just the action stuff that I've asked him to draw but so many neat ideas he's done comic books graphic novels um a lot of design work he's a really talented dude so mm -hmm. what was the name of the the artist again it's Oshid McGillian Hughes okay. and it's OMH draws on uh Twitter each draws okay yeah check that everybody check that out everybody maybe we'll do texas chainsaw massacre 2 soon man. oh well, that's a wild one that's fun that would be good because that's that's yeah that would be different so uh pope my friend what do you got going on soon well um as you guys know i'm taking kind of a hiatus from rock and roll religion at the moment trying to uh you know come up with a future plan for the show and figure out what i'm going to do from there however uh, revisiting a previous topic of rock and roll religion, I will be on Christian DeLorme, Final Revival's channel, uh, this Wednesday, talking about one of my favorite records of all time and the second best Judas Priest album of all time, Defenders of the Faith. Ooh, so nice. we yeah. will be going into that, and I can't wait to talk about it with him. Nice. Yeah, I'll be joining you on that on that journey. Outstanding. I wonder if Judas Priest ever appeared in any canon movie soundtracks. Ooh, I, 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 I probably have a lot of a lot of cheap uh, Judas Priest sound alikes that they could find. Yeah, sound alikes maybe. Yeah. Uh, well, check Pope uh, Pope out on Christian's channel coming up, and check out Trish, Christian's vinyl revival. Uh, John, my friend, what you got going on? Well, tomorrow on my channel, I am going back to the adventures of Billy Bob space trucker from starfield and uh i'll be on uh chris delorme's channel on wednesday for at least the first hour and then the rest of it i'll be over on joe's channel which he'll tell you about that show later um but wednesday and friday you can find me on pop culture minefield uh on wednesdays i do cyberpunk i'm about to finish uh, the phantom liberty um and then uh on uh, Fridays, I do Baldur's Gate 3. Nice. Yeah, check out John's channel, everybody, and Pop, and Pop Culture Minefield channel, uh, which I occasionally pop up on. Lots of great uh, discussions and stuff on there. Thanks for being here, John. Appreciate it, mate. And uh, last and definitely not Liam Neeson's least, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> What do you oh, got going man. on, buddy? Oh, man, just a regular schedule. Uh, I won't be doing the show with my brother on Thursday because I will unfortunately be in Dallas. I'm looking forward to it. going to see my Seahawks, but they're probably going to get crushed like a beer can by the Dallas Cowboys. But anyway, I'll be at the game. Um, nice. But the next time you'll see me on YouTube, I'll be on uh, my show on Tuesday e uh, night at 10 p.m. Central Time. Uh Papa Joe Gamer After Dark, video games, cocktails, and fails. I believe we're playing Stuntman. Isn't that what I decided to do? Since we yeah. the last time I tried to play it, it got messed up. Yeah, doing that. And then, of course, Stay the Atmosphere, my pop culture show we do on Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m. Central. Yep. Great stuff, mate. Think, yeah, go subscribe to Joe, everybody. Uh, I think the links have been in, in the chat. We uh, all appreciate you guys. Subscribe no to all these guys. And if you've got a spare second, hit the thumbs up on this. And if you've not subscribed to me yet, please do. Really appreciate your support because so we love doing these shows and we're going to keep mm -hmm. doing them. Um, as for me, I won't be doing a show next Monday because I've got family stuff going on. Uh, I think the following week we'll go back to music and I'm going to do Thin Lizzy special. Oh, there you yes. go. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, but you will catch me on um, Thursday doing a live show for the Rock and Roll Rowdies. Please go check them out, everybody, and subscribe to their channel. 
these guys share the most wonderful stories. And we're doing these lovely little shows on Thursday where we talk about various music stuff and their touring experiences. And it's a lot of fun. These guys have worked with some big acts over the years. So please go subscribe to them. Check that out. Um, tonight, I'll probably be uh, later on tonight. You'll catch me on Monday night to uh, Meltdown on Comics Division's channel and tons of other stuff coming up. So thanks again, everyone, for being here. Enjoy the rest of your night. Enjoy the rest of your week. Uh, and just, you know, try and live like Chuck Norris, you know? That's all I can say. Live. Be more that, Chuck. That's a tall order, bro. <laughs> it's a, well, that would be Liam Neeson. What would Chuck uh, do? What would Chuck do? <laughs> Remember, what would Chuck do? And get the Canon film guides, or else I want to know why. And if you're ever in question, Chuck is watching. Chuck is watching. <laughs> Thanks again, everyone, for being here. Take right. care. Have fun. See ya. Oh, Austin's gone. Are yep. we still live? Yes, we yeah. are. It's happened again. Yay!